What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to share with you five crops that we've grown that we consider to be a waste of time and would never plant again. Let's go! The first crop that we would never grow again is the aronia berry. This is probably the best of the five crops that I'm gonna label, but I still would not grow it again. The aronia berry, also often called the chokeberry because it's so astringent. This is a nice bush to actually look at. It would be good for just solely edible landscaping if you put it like in the front yard of your house, if you kind of wanted to hide that you're growing edibles. It's in the rose family. It's relatively productive. It doesn't take much work. I kind of just plant it and put it in the ground. But when it comes down to it, you really have to process these berries in order to eat them. They're good for like jams, jellies, uh, juices, wines, or even putting in baked goods. But my favorite thing when it comes to growing fruit in your backyard or any kind of crops is I like going out there and eating them fresh. If you grab one of these and try to eat it fresh, it's just so astringent. I'll, I'll show you. So they're relatively productive. I have two different, different varieties growing right here. And over here, this is the Nero, the left, small bush you can see down there. And then we have another one on the right, which is doing it a bit better. So there aren't terrible plants, Tuck likes keeping watch of them, but when it comes down to it, if I'm gonna use these only to process, then I'd rather grow something even like grapes or raspberries or even like elderberries because you can eat those fresh, but you can also process them into like pies and juices and wines as well. So let's actually get a taste of them, even though I don't think it's gonna be that good. Uh, just so you can see what it happens when you actually have them fresh. I wouldn't consider, I wouldn't suggest doing this, but we'll just try it. A bit of sweetness at the front end. At the end, you get the, you get the chalky, astringent, dry mouth flavor. Not absolutely terrible, but when it comes down to it, there's just so many better options for perennials and even something like a blueberries. This kind of reminds me of the look of a blueberry bush, but it tastes way worse. And uh, I guess it'd be good, it could be good if you're into processing your fruits and stuff a lot, but overall, not something I would grow again, probably. The second crop I would never plant again is the Flying Dragon Hardy Orange Tree. I mean, look at the size of the thorns on this thing. These will do some damage if you fall into it. As you can see, it is loaded with fruit, which is a good thing. Look how much fruit is on it. But the only bad thing about that is the fruit is almost like inedible when it's ripe. It's so bitter and so acidic and it has such a strong flavor that you really have to process it heavily in order to eat it. You can use it in like syrups and stuff, but uh, overall it's almost, it's almost inedible. I'll show you what the fruit looks like when it's ripe and I'll cut into it. I'll show you that too. Overall the tree, it looks pretty interesting and pretty cool. So if you wanted to grow it just as a, like a landscaping tree that has a little bit uniqueness to it, I can see that. Just make sure you plant it like up against the fence or something because I'm telling you these thorns can be really nasty. One of the reasons I ended up planting this tree was because I wanted bragging rights saying that I was growing an orange in New Jersey. But when it comes down to it, this isn't a true orange. Instead, if you wanna grow an orange in a location that you can't really grow citrus, I would suggest growing something like the Mayer lemon tree in a pot. At least you could eat those fruits and use them for so many different things. When it comes down to this, it's, uh, it's cool, but it's more of a novelty. Another crop I would never grow again is the African horned melon. This one is an annual, and I'm not growing it this year, but I've grown it in the past. And I'll show you some clips of what it looks like as I'm talking about it a bit. And the reason I never plant it again is because it's like this. I said I would never grow it again, and I don't have it growing anymore because it's an annual. Tuck's looking for some snacks. I know he wants something. So let's actually grab this little guy a carrot, and then we'll get more into the African horned melon. I know I got some carrots back here. Still doing pretty decent. This is a perfect size for him. Tucky, what do you think, buddy? Let's let this guy snack on a carrot. This guy's the best. Spam some hearts down low if you love seeing Tuck in the videos. And we also wanted to mention to uh, check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a Guarding His Life shirt, grab a Grow shirt, and just be part of the team. So when it comes to the African horned melon, the actual plant grows really well, the vine. It was super vigorous and had great disease resistance. One of the big problems, besides the fact that the fruit was so incredibly spiky, it was almost dangerous, was that the fruit wasn't ready to eat till like late August, September. So I planted the melons in like the early spring and it took so long to actually reach production. And then when they did get into production, they're so spiky that like 
like I said, it's almost dangerous. I can see why it would be an important crop in Africa or something to keep like maybe some of the different kind of animals and stuff away. But around here, it's just not worth it. There's so many better alternatives and I'll show you a fantastic alternative to it after I talk a little bit more about it. Even when I cut into the horned melon and tasted it, it was like a bit sour. The flavor wasn't that great. So there wasn't that many great things about it or there wasn't really another reason for me to ever plant it again. So if you guys have seen it in the, in the magazines, it looks really cool. It looks like it'd be really awesome to grow. And I mean, it does look interesting, but if you don't have the space to really just plant all different kinds of things, I wouldn't suggest growing it. And again, it, those things were so spiky, I went out there in like a, almost like a hazmat kind of suit to harvest them because uh, it was almost dangerous to harvest them. Let me bring you over to a plant that I would definitely grow instead of the African horned melon. Come this way. So, head over here. This is another, uh, this is a Mexican gherkin. It's like the African horned melon. It's incredibly, uh, incredibly good disease resistance. The fruit is also ready so early and it puts so much fruit out. So here's one of them here and there's just so many of them. The plant becomes, it grows so well that it actually almost grows too well. It can start taking over some stuff like peek over here. It's starting to strangle out my tomato a little bit. Look at it, just growing up the tomato, pulling at it, kind of pulling down on it. So I'm gonna to have to release it from the tomato. I'll just cut it right here. And even look at the sunflower. It's growing up this too. Look, you got just little Mexican gherkins hanging from the sunflowers. So let's grab one and taste it. And I'll uh, give you an idea of kind of how they taste. Here's them here, let me just grab this one. They taste similar in my opinion to the African horn melon because it's got that like bit of sourness to it. Mm. A nice cucumbery flavor, a nice pop to it, and uh, you don't get like a lot of seeds. The African horn melon had so many seeds in it too that it made it like didn't make it as good to eat. And you could let the African horn melons like ripen and get really yellow, but then then it becomes even more sour. I think so. I wouldn't ever grow the African horn melon again, but when it comes to the Mexican gherkins, the cucumber melon, I'll probably always be planting these because they're so easy to grow, they're so productive, and I do like the flavor a lot. The next crop I would never grow again is the autumn olive. This one is in the Eleagnus family, so it's a nitrogen fixer. Because of that, it grows really, really fast, which could be a good thing, but in a lot of scenarios, it's actually a bad thing because this plant can be super invasive in certain locations and actually disrupt the natural habitat. You'll see some people talk about this online, how it has a great flavor. It's an amazing like permaculture plant, but when it comes down to it, it's like hard to manage. The fruit doesn't taste that great. Even on a variety like this, this is the amber autumn olive. They're supposed to stay this yellowish color when most autumn olives will get like red. They've got these little speckles on the berries and they have like a tart flavor. I don't really like the flavor that much. And I think there's so many better options when it comes down to it. Uh, I'll try one just to show you guys kind of like how they taste. We'll bite into this one right here. So a tiny bit of sweetness, definitely some tartness in there. And it doesn't actually have the astringency like something like the uh, aronia berry does, but it's just not something that I could really consider myself eating a lot of. And if you don't have a lot of space, it's definitely not a good option because they can grow really large. If you're really into permaculture, it could be good as like a zone four or five plant or something to keep out in an area where you never really have to go because it's just gonna continue growing and growing. And the birds like a little bit. But if you don't have a lot of space, this isn't something you should be growing. I mean, I'm not super upset that I planted the autumn olives, but looking into the future, it's not something I would really ever grow again. And you wanna make sure that you're managing it so it doesn't really spread too much. So uh, overall, not something I'd grow again, the autumn olive. The fifth crop that I would never grow again are tomatoes. No, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I love tomatoes. But the crop that I would never grow again is in the nightshade family, just like tomatoes are. And I would never grow again the goji berry. I don't have a goji berry bush to show you right now because I pulled all of them out because I have a disdain for that plant. Not only do the berries taste like really bad tomatoes to me, it's fresh, they have a terrible flavor, you have to process them, but also the plants are so finicky one year they'll flower and produce a lot of berries. The next year they won't flower, produce any berries. And then they like to spread around everywhere. I could barely even get rid of them. It took me years to get rid of the bushes. So it's not something I would ever suggest planting. If you want to grow some, grow some in pots. But to me, it's just not worth it. 
years in the past, they had like this big push by, I don't know, who, who pushed them or something, that they're like an incredible superfood, which they are very a very good superfood, but if you have a small backyard garden, I wouldn't waste your space growing it. Maybe throw it in a pot, like I said, or just try to get some organic dried powder of the goji berries because it does have great health benefits. I would never grow it again though, personally. It's not something that I, I just didn't like the plants at all. They were just finicky and they never grew well. Instead of growing something like the goji berries, I would suggest you plant something like ground cherries. Ground cherries are really cool. They kind of remind me of the flavor of a goji berry, but they're much sweeter and it has like almost this weird oily kind of feel at the end of eating them. And they produce just like this, look how cool those are. And these little baskets, I don't have any ready right now. When they're ready, they'll fall to the ground, but I'll take one of these baskets right here. It comes in like its own little casing. You open it up and then they're, they're on the inside like that. This one is Aunt Molly's ground cherry. So it's gonna get more like yellowish when it's ripe. But I think this is a good alternative to something like the goji berries. These aren't for tuck, but I mean, I could just never see myself growing goji berries again. There wasn't anything I liked about the plants and it might be one of my most hated plants. And some of you might argue against that, but I just, I just do not like them at all. Me and Tuck feel like this was an important video to make, even though it kind of seems like I might be like discouraging you from growing things. In my opinion, it's more about like encouraging you not to grow these things because there are so many great alternatives. Some of these crops that I share with you, like the autumn olives or even like the Aronian stuff, these perennials take like a number of years to start producing. So you might realize that you didn't want this or you might be upset about growing it and you won't find out like till a few years after. So I really do not want you to waste your time and your space on something that's not gonna get you excited to get out into the garden more. Because when it comes down to it, we really wanna grow things that get us outside more, that encourage us to plant even more things. So I don't think these kind of crops are gonna do that for you. There are so many fantastic alternatives. Like even something as simple as an apple tree. I mean, you can grow so many different kinds of apples and they're so good to eat. You can use them in so many different ways or even something like grapes. Grapes are fantastic. You can use the grapes for like a lot of the same kind of processing that you would for berries and stuff. There are also some rare alternatives that I like growing too. Something like the pawpaw tree. Pawpaws are awesome. They're rare. People don't hear about them that much, but it's still a really good crop to grow. Or if you wanted to grow something like that's more for landscaping and it's kind of more of a rare edible, you could grow something like the Rosa Rugosa. It has such beautiful flowers. They smell amazing and you could, it has the big edible hips on it. So I'm just saying that the things that I share with you, it's not that I don't like growing rare things. It's just that there are some things in my opinion that aren't worth the space. So if there are some other crops that you guys have planted in the past, whether they be perennials or annuals that you would never grow again, make sure to share them down low because we're trying to, I'd like for this video to kind of be a source of information for people that new gardeners, that they don't just waste their time with something and then get discouraged from growing more things. Me and Tuck always appreciate you guys out here. And he always wants us to plant more carrots and more cucumbers. So he was getting a little upset finding out that we wasted some space on things like autumn olives or even on erroneous. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had a blast out here. And we always just love coming out and sharing kind of what we're thinking about at this time of the year. So when things are starting to slow down, we're starting to head towards fall more. We're already starting to think about are there some things we should take out? Are there some things we should replace? Should we add more of the same thing that we really enjoyed a lot? So that's kind of why we're making this video at this time. And we wanted to just uh, send a thank you to one of our new cha channel members, Deb of Avondale. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. It means a lot to me and the little boss. We also wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a gardener's life shirt, grab a grow shirt, and be part of the team. This guy, I know, had a lot of fun out here. He got his fixing for some carrots, but he's looking at me like he's ready to go inside. It's probably lunchtime, and he needs a little bit more than just a carrot or two for lunch. So we had a blast, and we hope you guys picked up a lot of value from this video. And if this is a video you think other people can gain value from, make sure you share this video. It helps a lot with the channel. Also, hit the subscribe button. That helps a lot. And then hit the like button, too, if this is like a kind of video that you guys are enjoying. And then let us know down in the comments if there's some other kinds of videos that you think will bring value to you that we can go a little more into. Because uh, me and Tuck, we're always out here spending so much time. We've got 10, maybe even 11, I think, years of experience growing our own food in the backyard. So we think that uh, any way we can 
give you guys some more information, some more value, and get you growing more food, we're down to do it. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.